listening to This Week in Big Sky Football. A comprehensive look at all this week's action in Big Sky Football. Now here's your host, Scott Gerard. And welcome on in. It's another edition of This Week in Big Sky Football. I'm your host, Scott Gerard. Big show today, and we're completely jam-packed with all things Big Sky Football. In fact, uh, North Dakota coach Bubba Schwagart currently on hold. We'll get to him here in just a moment. In segment number two, we'll chat with Northern Arizona defensive end Siapelli Anau and stats Craig Haley. We'll preview all the games coming up this weekend, and we'll also give you your Root Sports Players of the Week. As we mentioned, Bubba Schwagart will join us here in a few moments. But before we do that, let's review last week's games in Big Sky Football play. Eastern Washington earning a big 49-31 victory over Northern Colorado. They moved to 3-0 and in Big Sky play. The Eagles scoring 35 points in the second half after trailing 17-14 to at halftime. Gage Gabrud continuing to throw it around. 435 yards, five scores. Shaq Hill score, uh, caught four touchdown passes in the second half alone. Eagles roll with the win in 659 yards of total offense. Montana earning a dominating victory over Mississippi Valley State. Final score there, 67-7. to Grizz scored 60 unanswered points against the Delta Devils, holding them to negative rushing yards and even getting a defensive lineman return, returning an interception for a touchdown. Northern Arizona getting its first conference win of the season. They defeat Montana State 20-14 to at Bozeman. Lumberjacks defense at the table for the offense. NAU forcing four Bobcat turnovers. Then the offense outgained Montana State 405 yards to 281. Weber State picked up a homecoming win over Portland State. Wildcat, Wildcats scoring all 14 points in the second half as quarterback Jadrian Clark found tight end Andrew Vollert for a 12-yard go-ahead score in the fourth quarter. Game was a defensive battle. Points weren't scored until Vikings quarterback Alex Caressa found the end zone with just 17 seconds left in the first half. Weber State 2-0 in conference play, and they've now won three in a row. Southern Utah going to 2-1 in Big Sky play with a 24-3 victory over UC Davis. Thunderbirds gained only 260 yards on the ground, but controlled the game's tempo using special teams and defense. Thunderbirds led 21-3 at halftime. Malik Brown, 58 yards and a score as UC Davis 0-3 in league play. And finally, North Dakota getting a big victory in the Golden State, earning a 40-7 victory over Sac State. Fighting Hawks, 422 yards, 625 offensive yards total, with 422 of those being on the ground. North Dakota held a 28-0 lead as UND quarterback Keaton's uh, Studsrud with 303 yards of total offense and teammate Brady Oliveira with 111 yards and two scores. Speaking of those Fighting Hawks, let's jump out to the phone lines. Welcome in there, head coach, one of the greatest guys in college football you'll ever meet, Bubba Schweigart. Coach, how you doing? I'm doing great today. How are you? Yeah, it's always good when you uh, coming off a win like that. Uh, you know, I know that uh, obviously it's always great to win games, but when you're able to churn out that many yards, especially on the ground, you got to feel good about your team's performance. Well, we did feel uh, good about our team's preparation going into the game. I was really proud of our staff. I thought we had a good plan going in, and then to, for our guys to execute it at a high level was pleasing to see. You know, and a big key in the game, uh, our first possession, we were – pinned on the one yard line with a very good special teams play by Sacramento State and we turned around and you know drove the ball 99 yards for a score and that just really set the tone for the entire first half and our guys executed well on that drive. You know coach uh, you started out 0-2 with two really tough close losses you've now rebounded and reeled off four in a row you're 3-0 and in league play has there been a change to anything or is it just you know the football gods are kind of smiling on you over the last four weeks? Well, I think, uh, you know, there's a belief in our program that we know how we want to play and know who we want to be. And in those first two games, you know, we, we felt going into the game at Stony Brook that they were a, a very good football team and they're really good on defense. And, you know, it's a toss-up game. Uh, points were hard to come by, and then we had a, a mistake on special teams that cost us. And we still got it down in their end and had an opportunity to – for the go-ahead score, but missed on a fourth and short. And the next week we go to Bowling Green, and they're a tough opponent uh, to defend, you know, with spreading it out and going fast and tempo. And we just battled in that game and scored with 13 seconds left and made the decision to go for a two-point conversion for the win and just came up a little bit short. So, you know, we were disappointed because of the scoreboard, but our guys were playing hard and really battling. So, uh, you know, now we're feeling better about ourselves because the scoreboard's been in our favor and we've got some breaks, but I think we're making some of our own breaks too. No doubt. Keaton Studsrud has had a strong season. He had a strong season last year too before dealing with some injuries and he's come back to be a great dual threat quarterback this year. What about him that's allowed him to develop and have the success he's having this year? Well, he's a very good leader. You know, this is a young man that uh, 
was the point guard on the basketball team in high school, a shortstop on the baseball team, the quarterback on the football team. So he was competing year-round, and that's one of the things that really uh, appealed to us with Keaton. And what he's done in our football program since being here, he's just improved so much mechanically that he throws a uh, accurately and he throws a good ball easy ball to catch so he's been very efficient passer for us he's never going to have numbers like many of the big sky quarterbacks but for the way we play we think he's very effective and efficient at the passing game and he's a good runner and the last two weeks he's run the ball a little bit more and especially saturday night he had a really good night on the ground and and uh he's just a very good leader and uh he spends so much time in the office here just learning the plan and and we just count on him to do so much for our football team. So we're really proud of his leadership and how he guides our team. You know, on a side note to that to that answer, Coach, uh, there's a lot of kids out there that are, you know, they get good at one particular sport and then they just specialize. And that's they block everything out and that's the sport they focus on. And mom and dad throw a ton of money into making sure they're ready to go in that sport. Uh, you got a quarterback there that you just talked about, played baseball, played basketball, played football. When you're recruiting a kid, is that something you look at, the fact that they're, they're a little bit more diversified when they, when, in, in their high school activities? Very much so. You know, this past year, I think we recruited the best intramural basketball team on our <laughs> campus. We've uh, got all-state basketball players, uh, two in the secondary and two receivers that were very good basketball players. And one of them we really offered by what we saw in the basketball court. You know, he did not have a, a great – Football video, you know, here in uh, in North Dakota, it's tough to throw the ball late in the year, and early in the year they weren't throwing at his high school team. So we just went and did evaluation of him on the basketball floor. And Noah Wanzik, who's a fr- true freshman that is playing for us, and he's got great body control, really good ball skills. And, and uh, you know, so that's part of our evaluation process. And we just like to see our guys that are going to come into our program that love to compete year-round and and be athletes year-round and love competition. Your team motto this year has been uh, leave no doubt. And after maybe you got snubbed by the FCS playoff committee last year, is that kind of your team's ambition to fulfill that motto this season? Yeah, you know, we don't talk about uh, last year a whole lot, but obviously, um, you know, it it affected us in our winter training and our spring ball. Our guys uh, know we have to do better. That was how we approached it. We need to win more football games and our our vision and our goal for our program is move this program to the top of the big sky because when you win the big sky you get the automatic bid into the yeah. tournament and when you win the tournament uh, you, when you're in the tournament you have an opportunity to win it and be fcs champions so that's what drives us each day and we our model really here in the office is day to day day by day and you know we don't want to look too far ahead and just want to really you know, put forth championship behaviors and championship effort day in and day out. Well, you got Southern Utah this weekend. On paper, it looks like an extremely physical game against two teams that really like to get at it. Uh, What are your thoughts on this team, and how do you prepare for them? Well, we think they're a very good football team. Uh, Defensively, they're real physical up front. We, you know, they're two inside guys. You don't really move them, and we like to run the football, so that's a concern for us. And then they're good off the edges and good at linebacker. So we're going to have to find ways to be efficient on offense and take advantage of some field position, and that'll be key in the game. And then offensively, where they're very explosive. They've scored from so many different places on the field. You know, we think their quarterback is extremely talented and throws really good deep balls. We think uh, Mike Sharp and Elijah Givens and Deshaun Holmes, uh, you know, those guys are such excellent receivers. And then they have a big tight end at 6'7", that's hard to handle. And then you throw in their running backs on top of that, Malik Brown and Rayshon Pringle, both of them have scored. You know, one scored an 85-yard run, I believe, another one on a 75-yard run. So very explosive. So our challenge is going to be eliminate explosive plays from their offense and make them drive the football, and then we've got to find a way to move the ball, and if we don't score, we've got to create some field position for our football team. Mm-hmm. Well, Coach, it's always great to catch up with you. Thanks for your time, and we look forward to catching up again here very soon. All right. Thank you. You got it. That's North Dakota Coach Bubba Schweigart here on This Week in Big Sky Football. Take a quick break. Come back, and uh, we'll get you your Root Sports Players of the Week. We'll also outline the games coming up this weekend. It's all straight ahead. You're listening to another edition of This Week in Big Sky Football.
NCAA Division I FCS football is a game of perseverance, integrity, passion, character, and sportsmanship. As he works to honor the game, every FCS student athlete grows in his responsibilities as a student and as a member of his campus and community. Dedicated to personal growth and success in the classroom, the NCAA Division I FCS, every down, every day. The Big Sky Conference has a new app. Search Big Sky Conference on the App Store and Google Play and download the new free Big Sky Conference app. Watch live conference events, connect with Big Sky social media accounts, and access premium exclusive content. The Big Sky Conference app, now available for free on the App Store and Google Play. Welcome back to This Week in Big Sky Football. Welcome on back. Segment number two here on This Week in Big Sky Football. I'm Scott Gerard. Big thanks to Austin Horton, who handles all the production, puts this thing together each and every week, does a tremendous job as always. We've got Northern Arizona, Ciapelli and Nahu joining us here in just a moment. Before we do that, let's review our Root Sports Players of the Week in Big Sky Conference play. Eastern Washington quarterback Gage Cabrude is your Offensive Player of the Week. Another strong performance with the most fourth qu uh, fourth quarter yards in school history as Northern Colorado, or excuse me, as Eastern Washington gets that win over Northern Colorado, 49 to 31. Gabrud with 514 yards of total offense, include a 435 yard passing performance, five scores, and a team leading 79 yards on the ground. Southern Utah punter Tate Lewis is this week's Root Sports Big Sky Special Teams Player of the Week. It was all about ball control in this one, and Tate Lewis came up with some impressive punting nine times for 439 yards. That's an average of 48.8 yards. A punt his longest went for 64 yards. And finally, your Root Sports Defensive Player of the Week. Well, it's our next guest, Siapelli Anau of Northern Arizona. He had three sacks for a loss of 29 yards, including a pair of forced fumbles, a big one late as Montana State had the ball at the Northern Arizona 35-yard line, but a new sacked quarterback got the forced fumble, and again, Northern Arizona recovered to get the win. So let's go out to the phones and welcome in the man himself, Siapelli Anau, joining us here on This Week in Big Sky Football. How are you? I'm doing good. Uh, how you doing? Sir? Doing well. All right. So you guys had had some ups and downs this year, but man, it's nice to get a win and a conference win, no doubt. Tell us a little bit about that game and how that went down for you. Uh, so yeah, just coming into that game, uh, you know, we the whole team just had a mentality like, you know, we had to change everything up, and uh, it all started with our coaches, and we just changed our our attitude and we brought the energy, and you know, we just knew we had to we had to get it if we had any chance. Uh, to do anything inside this conference because you know anything can happen with this conference. No doubt about that. Um, you know, and you guys were picked to win the league, and you, but you know, you've had some injuries. Uh, you lost your starting quarterback, Case Kukas. How has this team rallied to you know try to overcome some of those uh, some of those uh, setbacks? Um, right now, it's pretty much it's us versus everyone else. Our backs are against the wall. A lot of, a lot of doubters. So uh, we have a lot of faith in our in our new quarterback right now. Uh, you know, Case is a great player. We're all behind him, but you know, it's always the next man up, and we all, uh, the only way for us to be successful is to get behind our new quarterback, Blake Kemp. So, you know. You know, I want to go through uh, under two minutes in. You know, less you had less than two minutes in that game. Montana State's got the ball at your 35-yard line, a chance to score. But you sacked the Montana State quarterback, loss of five yards. You force a fumble that was scooped up by your teammate. Kind of take us through that last play. Did you feel like you needed to individually step up and make a play there? Yeah, well, uh, yeah, we had this saying uh, in our in our D line position group uh, about competitive greatness, and it's always uh, just being at your best when your best is needed, especially in the curse time like that. And uh, they called the call uh, for me to have. Just to have a free rush, and they put all the trust in me, and I knew how to. I had to give everything I could for them to have all that trust in me. <laughs> so yeah, I just he called the call, and I just did my job, and I did it well. See you, and, you oh, know, I'm sorry. Keep going. I was just, I was gonna say, you know, and then it's always like, you know, but it was a team thing. The only reason I got a sack is because, you know, our coverage is there, and you know, just just the play calling by our coach. That's a good answer, by the way. I like it. See you, Pelly and Nahu joining us here on this weekend at Big Sky Football. Tell us a little bit about your story. How'd you end up in Northern Arizona? Um, so 
I played in high school in Phoenix, uh, in Phoenix, and I was in high school. And uh, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do after that. I, t- I took a year off, and uh, I ended up walking on to a junior college, got to community college. And uh, my first year was kind of rough. Didn't know if I was going to get any time in or not. Or not. But uh, I just stuck with it. And uh, my second year, I had a chance to start for uh, Doug Madofsky over there for the artichokes. And uh, you know, I had a pretty good success over there. It was an uh, all-conference first team. I'm a number three team in the nation. Um, at the end, leading the team in tackle was pretty crazy, I- I'd say. But, uh, yeah, I had a, a few offers after that. And uh, what really made me choose NAU was uh, the coaching staff and the family em- environment that uh, I got the vibes from, from the coaches. And, uh, you know, uh, coming into – before I even got to NAU, had a little bit of adversity with personal stuff and uh, gave the coaches a little bit of adversity, but it didn't, it didn't inflate the decision to, to make them move on me. Uh, they had no, uh, they had no like, uh, regrets about offering me or anything, so that really like, just showed me how much uh, you know they cared for me. So, yeah. When a school shows you that kind of loyalty in recruiting, do you feel like you need to – you know, um, you know, bust your butt even a little bit more to show that ro- loyalty back to your coaching staff. Yes, sir. Always, especially, uh, especially my position coach. Uh, he's been there for he's been there for me through, for a lot of things. Like, and especially uh, last year when I couldn't play my uh, my true senior year, uh, it was kind of it was, it was very hard. But you know, the coaches were there for me. The team was there for me, and uh, he just you just you just felt the love that they had for me. So. Hmm. What what's it like playing for Jerome Sowers? I mean, obviously he's one of the all time greats in Big Sky Conference football. What's he like to play for? Uh, it's unique. Uh, he, uh, you, like uh, it's kind of unexplainable, really. Like you don't, you don't think uh, uh, it's hard to say because it's just he knows everything. <laughs> it's crazy to think that because he's such a quiet quiet guy, but when he needs to talk. But when he needs to talk to you and he, when he needs to make a point, he's just like, wow. Like, he really knows his stuff and like he actually knows his players. Like individually, he knows like who everyone is. He knows how their personality is. You know, he goes to special teams, but he knows everyone. He knows how everyone is, like who they are really. You know, he can see them right through you. You got a big one against Idaho State coming up. Uh, what are some of the things you're focused for as you prepare for this game against the Bengals? Um, just Having another good game, uh, we always say the only people that can beat us is us. You know, again, uh, a reason why uh, I felt like we got the win was uh, we uh, we went from averaging, I think, around seven penalties a game, and then last game we only had three. I think with that, uh, we just keep down the penalties and then just mental mistakes as well. You know, just key your assignments and all that. So if we can just have a good week of practice and then just – build on what we did last weekend and i think we'll be fine great stuff well we appreciate your time uh congratulations on the win keep it rolling we look forward to catching up with you again here soon thank you so much have a good day you too see you Pelly anau joining us here on this week in big sky football all right coming up on the other side we got a chance to chat with craig haley from stats we'll get his thoughts on this previous weekend look ahead to next week uh in big sky football And uh, we'll give you the full slate of games coming up as well. You're listening to another edition of This Week in Big Sky Football. The Big Sky Conference has a new app. Search Big Sky Conference on the App Store and Google Play and download the new free Big Sky Conference app. Watch live conference events, connect with Big Sky social media accounts, and access premium exclusive content. The Big Sky Conference app, now available for free on the App Store and Google Play. NCAA Division I FCS football is a game of perseverance, integrity, passion, character, and sportsmanship. As he works to honor the game, every FCS student athlete grows in his responsibilities as a student and as a member of his campus and community. Dedicated to personal growth and success in the classroom, the NCAA Division I FCS, every down, every day. 
Welcome back to This Week in Big Sky Football. Welcome on back. Final segment of This Week in Big Sky Football. I'm Scott Gerard. Craig Haley is currently waiting patiently on hold, and uh, we will go through all the upcoming games on the schedule. But first, an open invitation. Every fan out there of Big Sky Football needs to download the Big Sky Conference app. Watch live games, connect with social media, get premium content like No Big Deal, John Oglesby's story on the Portland State Viking football team visiting Utah's Hogle Zoo. It's the Big Sky Conference app available for free on the App Store and Google Play. All right, let's get to your schedule of games coming up this weekend, starting with defending Big Sky champs Southern Utah, traveling to take on 3-0 North Dakota Fighting Hawks. Game will be available at 1 o'clock Central. You can find that game on Midco Sports Network as well as WatchBigSky.com. Root Sports, your official television partner of the Big Sky Conference, and this week's Root Sports Game of the Week will be up in Ogden as Weaver State hosts Montana State in a game that will kick off at 1.30 on Root Sports Northwest as well as DirecTV's Audience Network. Montana, fresh off that big non-conference win, they take on Sacramento State in a game that kicks off at 2.30 Pacific time. You can find that game on Cal's Media in Montana as well as WatchBigSky.com. WatchBigSky.com, also your home for Cal Poly as they travel north of the Rose City, take on Portland State. Mustangs and Vikings uh, kick off at 2.30 Pacific at Providence Park and, again, available on WatchBigSky.com. Idaho State and Northern Arizona in a game that will match up two of the league's most experienced coaches. That game at 4 o'clock Pacific, and you can catch it on Fox Sports Arizona and WatchBigSky.com. And finally, Northern Colorado taking on UC Davis. That game kicks off at 4 o'clock Pacific. You can catch that on WatchBigSky.com. All right, let's go out to the phones. Welcome in the man who's probably forgotten more about FCS football than most of us will ever know. It's Craig Haley of Stats. Craig, how you doing, my man? I'm doing well. <laughs> Thank you for the introduction. <laughs> Always a pleasure. All right, so big offensive performances from Eastern Washington and another win. Uh, the Eagles just keep racking up the wins and racking up the yards. Uh, just how good is this team right now at the midpoint of the season? Well, they're, they're tremendous. I mean, I think we all need them to be on a bye so we can catch our breath the, <laughs> the way they score. <laughs> I think uh, I think they deserve to be the number two team in the country. I, I think last week was great because you know they rushed for over 200 yards and, and they needed that because they've just been going up and down the field with the passing. I, I think you know they've proven as an offense that you know they're much more than Cooper Cup. I mean they're they're you know have so many options and it, they convert on third down and, and keep the offense out on the field. I I just think it's it's been an overwhelming start for for coach baldwin's team i know we joked about montana setting themselves up for a big win against mississippi valley state but i mean they won and won in a big convincing fashion does that say anything about the grizz regardless of their opponent <laughs> well that that stat of negative 61 rushing yards yeah. allowed is it's mind-blowing i mean it to me it shows a, a focused team that they were there to get their business done no matter you know who they were playing i mean the the Grizz clearly have momentum going here, Scott. They, you know, they can't get caught looking ahead. I mean, nobody can in this race, but you know, they've they've really asserted themselves in the last couple games. I know North Dakota doesn't get all the headlines there in the state of North Dakota, but they're still three and zero in conference play. They take on mm -hmm. Southern Utah. Uh, they've got a very capable quarterback along with a really great multifaceted rushing attack. Uh, give me your thoughts on this team, and do you see them uh, continuing this run in Big Sky Conference play? I think so. I mean, that the schedule, you know, is, is manageable the rest of the way. I mean, at the same time, you don't want to forget that they're playing 11 straight weeks without a bye. I mean, their bye is November 19th, the, the final weekend of the regular season. So they, they kind of have to avoid wearing down late in the schedule. But, yes, they're on a roll, you know, starting to, to really, you know, get momentum and, and, and you know, sit, sit at the top with uh, Eastern Washington. You know, UND fell short of the playoffs last season, but at that time they were chasing that goal. They were one of the two team, last two teams left out. This year they're going to be a team being chased now that they're lead, leading the pack. I mean, that's pressure. I think they have to handle it as a team. But, yes, you know, UND has, has just been terrific the last month. We, uh, we talked to Bubba Schweigart in our first segment, and he said mm -hmm. talked about the team motto being leave no doubt. And uh, I think that was more a message for the uh, selection committee since they got snubbed last year. Yes, I think, um, you know, it, it, North Dakota, the whole state was up, up in arms that uh, uh, they didn't uh, get into the playoffs. But, you know, this year, hey, they can change all of that. 
All right, so we're halfway through the season, Craig. I know it's crazy to think about it like that, but I want to play a little game with you. We'll call it lock safe and on the bubble. You tell me the Big Sky teams based on what we've seen that are locks to make the playoffs uh, and safely in the conversation or are just uh, on the bubble. Sure. Um, I mean, I, I think if, yeah, I think right now you could safely project four teams, you know, getting to the playoffs as locks. If, if the playoffs started this weekend, I mean, certainly Eastern Washington and Montana, you know, North Dakota, leaving no doubt. Yeah. Um, I think Cal Poly, uh, you know, with the schedule they've played. Uh, then, then you know, the middle ground, I, I think Southern Utah will be next in the pecking order. I think they're in the conversation, probably just falling short. You know, Weber State's in the conversation, but, you know, not quite yet with their resume. You know, Northern Colorado, you, you know, needed to win last week um, at Eastern. They didn't. You know, I, I still think it's a no because, you know, they have a Division Two win, and, and Abilene Christian was winless. So I think four is a good number for, for any conference conference and the big sky you know would certainly have four at this point so uh and that leads me to my next question weber states won three in a row uh are they starting to i mean obviously they need to improve that resume quite a bit but they're starting to get on your radar it sounds like yeah i i think they've always been the dark dark horse in this race because you know north dakota was almost there last year i think they had advanced beyond being a dark horse most people definitely thought they would be a contender so i think weber you know it, it was a young team when they put the pieces together last year i mean they're not going to wow you you know they have some athletic players on defense you know their offensive line is sound we'd certainly be talking playoffs with weber right now if they hadn't let that uh, game get away uh, at south dakota i mean they they're they're three and two they'd be four and one yeah. you know i think they they you know, they're going to lament that perhaps. But at the same time, it, it, you know, they're doing a good job all around, Coach Hill and his staff. All right. And finally, quickly, what's your who's your top five as we update that every week? <laughs> well, you're, you're going to start calling me boring, Scott, <laughs> because my top ten didn't even change because it was kind of a pedestrian week of results last weekend. I mean, North Dakota State, number one. You know I've been on the bandwagon for Eastern Washington being number two. And then if the playoffs started today, they'd have the number two seed, I think. Jacksonville State 3, Sam Houston 4, Chattanooga 5. But there's some good games this week. There, there could be some movement at the top. We'll see. Well, Craig, we appreciate it. Great stuff as always. Thanks for your time. All right. Thank you, Scott. Craig Haley of Stats joining us here on This Week in Big Sky Football. Big thanks to him. Big thanks to Austin Horton for putting the, game, uh, putting the show together, as well as executive producer of This Week in Big Sky Football, John Oglesby. Enjoy the games this weekend. We'll be back with you next week for another edition of This Week in Big Sky Football.